Hey there, people. So today I am bringing you my complete summoner class loadout guide. I will be covering the best class specific armor and accessories for all stages of the game as a summoner on all platforms. I will be talking about all the summoning weapons uh, with only general recommendations as far as which ones you should use. Uh, in, I'll be including basic stats and ingredients if you want uh, more detailed information on uh, the weapons and accessories, particularly check out uh, the links I'll be including in the description to some of my other videos for those purposes. So, um, it's also worth noting that I am not including sentry focused setups that were added with the Old Ones Army update on uh, PC. Uh, currently some of that stuff, there's some sentry stuff you can do as well, uh, but that's uh, currently PC only. It'll be probably coming to others later, uh, but I'll probably do that in another video. And uh, I'll get this out of the way. The best modifier for all but one of the minion summoning staffs is the ruthless modifier. So if you're reforging your weapons, generally uh, summoner weapons, you're going to want to go for ruthless. Let's get that out of the way. So let's talk about pre hard mode first of all. Um, as usual, the early game wood and ore base armors are not class specific. So standard recommendation I make is to go to uh, silver or tungsten tier armor. It's very, very optional whether you want to go with uh, gold or platinum armor early in the game. It's a lot of work to get those and you don't really necessarily need to. Um, although it might be a little more important for summoners because there's really very little for summoners uh, in pre-hard mode, um, especially early pre-hard mode. And there's essentially nothing for summoners on the 3DS until halfway through hard mode, uh, specifically for the 3DS and, and older versions of the game that aren't current on other platforms. Um, so you may actually need to stick with a mixed setup or uh, you know use another setup until uh, defeating the Queen Bee boss specifically. Um, and again, that even doesn't work on 3DS, but we'll get to that. So. First of all, let's talk about the Slime Staff. The Slime Staff is actually um, the only uh, summoning staff that's available early, like very early in the game, and it is on all platforms, but it's extremely rare. Um, it's also not super effective. It's useful enough, but not super effective. Um, let's just give you a quick little demonstration. It summons a baby slime, uh, so he'll fight for you, as they say on most of the tooltips. And there he goes, uh, you know. He's useful. He does a certain amount of damage, um, but and you know even if you're not a summoner, it's going to be useful if you get this thing to to have a minion around. But um, it's not hugely hugely useful, and it's the only thing on certain platforms, 3DS specifically, uh, that you can even get in pre hard mode, um, and on older versions of the game that aren't current on other platforms, as I mentioned. So. Um, this is also the only exception to that ruthless modifier rule I just told you. Um, the slime staff best modifier is actually mythical due to the way the, the damage is rounded. Uh, but all the other ones I'm going to talk about, you're going to want to go with uh, ruthless. Um, so this little baby slime, he will do eight base damage. Uh, and if you really, really want this, uh, again, it's very uh, difficult to get and very rare. Um, you will want to set up probably a slime statue farm if you're not lucky enough to get it uh, by you know other means. So anyway, let's let's not dwell on that too much. Um, early in hard mode, or sorry, early in pre-hard mode, you're going to want to focus on kind of generalized accessories uh, as an aspiring summoner, um, because again, you can't really get a lot for summoners in pre-hard mode. So, you know, you're going to be looking for general movement accessories like, uh, you know, double jump stuff, boots that help you run fast and so on. Uh, so I have some very nice frost spark boots uh, that you can get in pre-hard mode. Also one, if you are on one of the updated platforms, uh, currently that's PC, PS4, uh, Xbox One will be coming to mobile and the Switch version will come with this uh, stuff built in when it comes out. Shark Tooth Necklace is a great accessory for all classes in pre-hard mode. I, I can't plug this enough. Um, you get it from Blood Moons. Uh, there's a couple enemies that can drop it during the Blood Moon, and it uh, it gives you an armor piercing ability that you know effectively penetrates the enemy defense. So that's going to be another accessory for you. Um, but the real thing is. Uh, as an aspiring summoner, you're going to want to defeat the Queen Bee as quickly as possible, as soon as possible, uh, because it's really necessary uh, to get the beeswax to craft a uh, couple different items, the Hornet Staff and the Bee Armor. The Bee Armor is actually the only summoning armor available in pre-hard mode. 
um, that's class specific. And you cannot get this stuff, unfortunately, on 3DS. None of this stuff is available on 3DS. Um, I'm not sure about the summoning potions, but uh, all this other stuff is not available on 3DS. So if you're an aspiring summoner, you're going to have to wait until like halfway through pre hard or halfway through actual hard mode uh, when you defeat Plantera. That's basically your starting point as a summoner on 3DS and on uh, older versions that are not current on other platforms. Just to let you know. So, um, but otherwise, if you are on you know an old gen console that's that's as new as the update that they released for those, or if you're on uh, any of the other platforms. You will want to defeat Queen Bee. You're going to want to get a bunch of um, bees wax, and you're going to want to craft this stuff. So you're going to want your bee armor, and you're going to want your hornet staff. And uh, those in total are going to require you uh, defeating the Queen Bee two or three times to get enough beeswax to make all that stuff. Um, it's 14 beeswax for the hornet staff. Uh, hornet staff uh, statistic is nine base damage. Um, and your Hornet minion, let's just uh, bring him up there. And you see, now that I have the bee armor, I can have more than one minion. So I have my baby slime and my Hornet. Um, and the Hornet uh, flies around, fires stingers at your enemies, and can inflict the poisoned debuff. So uh, quite useful. The bee armor, uh, again, only pre-hard mode summoning set, uh, requires 30 beeswax and gives you an additional two minion slots, which is why I can have more than one now. I can have up to three, and uh, also boosts it to 23% uh, summon or minion damage. And uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of your, your, your real starting point as a summoner, to get the bee armor and the hornet staff. Um, if you're really lucky, you can have the slime staff as well. And uh, well, you, you can summon like multiple hornets instead of, or you can summon multiple uh, <laughs> uh, baby slimes if you want <laughs> but um, yeah see I can replace those baby slimes with more hornets as well and you can also uh, cancel that one if you don't want any baby slimes <laughs> so there you go just how that all works um, but moving right along the next thing that you are going to want to do as a summoner now you are officially a summoner is uh, get the imp staff um, and to do that you're going to need to go down to the underworld and get some hellstone bars uh, you're going to need to mine some hellstone, get some obsidian, and make some hellstone bars. So uh, normally you would need to defeat either the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu to uh, craft a strong enough pickaxe to be able to mine the hellstone. Uh, there is a shortcut around this, which is that you can just fish for a, a reaver shark in the ocean, uh, which will get you everything you need for pre-hard mode. Uh, which means you can also get this earlier as well. So basically go to the ocean, uh, do a lot of fishing, get a reaver shark, and you can go right down to the underworld and start mining that hellstone. You're going to want probably some obsidian skin potions uh, so you can go in the lava and mine your hellstone. Uh, and you also need actual obsidian, which uh, is where water meets lava. Obsidian is formed. You can mine that out. Uh, you'll also need to find a hellforge in the underworld. And uh, once you have... Uh, your hellstone and your obsidian and your health forge. You set that down. You can make your hellstone bars, create your imp staff. Um, I actually didn't know how many bars you need for that, but uh, your imp does uh, 21 base damage and is basically the most powerful overall uh, minion that you can get in pre hard mode. Uh, flies around, throws fireballs three at a time, uh, which light enemies on fire. So you know what? Let's uh, let's just demonstrate both of these guys at once because we can. <laughs> go at them, boys! So there you go. As I say, hornet fires stingers, uh, imp fires fireballs. Now you may actually want to use both of these, uh, at least in certain circumstances. You can see uh, these guys are getting poisoned by the stingers as well, and uh, the imp will actually light them on fire. Oh, the perfect little demonstration there. <laughs> so uh, those guys are pretty effective. Um, but yeah, the problem with the imp is that it, it cannot attack underwater enemies. Uh, and also, it's not quite as quick. So you may want to use a combination of these at this point in the game. Uh, but that's, uh, that's up to you. And again, the imp staff, likewise, is not available on 3DS. So uh, sorry, 3DS people. <laughs> um, another thing you're... A couple other things you're going to want in uh, pre-hard mode, though, that you can get in pre-hard mode. Summoning potions, um, again, check out my potions guide for the details on this, but uh, summoning potions allow you to uh, cast one more minion. So 
Uh, now I've I've got um, let's see default you get one minion slot and then uh, you get your B armor and that gives you plus two so I've got three so I can have all three of these guys bounce around um, but you notice if I if I cast another slime my imp gets replaced and that's no good so uh, if I take one of these now I've got all three and I can have another imp that gives me four um, and another thing you can get in pre hard mode is your bewitching table. Uh, you can find this in the dungeon. Um, that's the only way to get it in pre-hard mode. If you don't find it in the dungeon, wait until you get into hard mode and you can actually, once you find your wizard NPC, your witch doctor will then sell you the bewitching table, which is kind of odd, but um, yeah, and then I can summon one more. And there we go. So now we've got a total of five. Uh, and that is the, the max for um, this setup for now. But I can have five minions and that's a pretty good start and uh, the other thing about um, being a summoner is that yeah you're gonna summon these guys and they're gonna fight for you but you're still gonna need to defend yourself so you'll probably want um, one or more other good weapons so while well, I have a terrarian which of course at this stage in the game you wouldn't have in pre-hard mode but um, a decent sword to basically keep the enemies at bay and knock them back and uh, and just to fight them if they get close enough to you um, and maybe something ranged it's up to you you can you can use magic weapons you can use melee weapons you can use ranged weapons um, you know and that's you're focusing on your summoner setup as a summoner but you're still going to need some other stuff for when enemies uh, are not immediately killed by your by all your summons so keep that in mind and uh, basically that's where we are for pre-hard mode and we're going to move on to hard mode. All right, so uh, one thing to keep in mind actually that's really important for being a summoner in hard mode, uh, the beginning of hard mode, for the other three classes you can get the new ores and get the appropriate headgear uh, and you know there's a ranged headpiece, there's a melee headpiece, there's a uh, magic headpiece, but there is no such headpiece for summoners. So unfortunately, summoners get left out of that deal. Um, you have to go and find uh, the materials to craft new summoning armor elsewhere uh, when you get into hard mode. So uh, one thing though that um, has been changed on the updated platforms, uh, the 1.3 update or equivalent, uh, again, currently that's on PC, PS4, Xbox One, will be coming to mobile. Um, if you do have uh, the update, if you have that update, or on, you're on one of the platforms that does have that update and you have got it, <laughs> you can get a summoner emblem when uh, you defeat the wall, in flesh, wall of flesh. Uh, it's a certain chance that the wall of flesh will drop a summoner emblem. Uh, before that update, though, if you do not have that update, this does not exist and you will not be able to get uh, a summoner emblem. Uh, but for the pre-update platforms, you can actually get an Avenger emblem sooner than you can on the updated platform, so it's sort of a trade-off. Um, summoner emblem will give you 15% increased summon or minion damage, uh, so that's a very nice boost and you're going to want it if you're on one of those platforms. But um, if you're not, then you can get the Avenger emblem instead, which does 12% uh, increased damage. Now to do that you will need to farm the Wall of Flesh. You may need to farm it for either one of these, uh, but definitely for the Avenger Emblem you're going to need to get all three of the other emblems and combine them if you're on a pre-update platform. Uh, whereas on the updated platforms you're actually going to need to defeat all three mechanical bosses before you can get an Avenger Emblem uh, because the crafting recipe is different. I'm not going to get into that. Um, now if uh, you are on an updated platform. You may you may once you defeat all three mechanical bosses want to get both of those. So uh, we'll pretend that we are going that route. Uh, another thing um, that you will want to do uh, as early as possible in hard mode generally is to get wings. Of course, uh, you're not going to get these wings early in, <laughs> in hard mode. But to give you the idea, um, once you do get um, wings, you're probably going to want to get rid of your boots. I went ahead and already placed those in, in my pre-hard mode chest here. Um, because one thing about getting wings is that you don't really need the boots at that point and it gives you room for additional accessories. Now at this point you may not have that many accessories so you might want to keep both. They're both kind of useful. Uh, but once you do have enough damage boosting accessories, particularly I like to focus on damage boosting mostly myself. Um, 
you will probably want to swap out those boots for something a little more useful uh, because you know when you, once you can fly around uh, you don't necessarily need the boots and you can uh, you know focus on your attacks or on your defense there are some good defensive accessories which I'm mostly not going to get into uh, they're not summoner specific but you know Ankh shield obviously stuff like that um, so just to have that in mind now there's also the question of reforging your accessories um, so yeah you, you'll want you know defensive or damage boosting accessories in general these are a couple of good ones that are going to help you as a summoner um, but you'll also want to look at reforging your uh, accessories which actually I have not done <laughs> in this case um, but generally I like to go for uh, the menacing de or the menacing uh, modifier personally um, to maximize my offense that's usually my approach but uh, you may also, you know, you may prefer to go for warding, which maximizes your defense. Uh, menacing gives you uh, four plus four percent damage, unlike this one that's just three. Um, warding gives you plus four uh, points of defense. So those are basically the two options you're going to want to, you know, decide between, and you're going to want to probably go all the way one way or the other. Um, I like to go all, all out on offense and, and try to kill my enemies as fast as possible and then that way I don't have to worry about whether they're hitting me but other people prefer the warding for the defense and particularly an expert it's that much more valuable so that's a thought as well. Um, that's up to you. And another uh, thing, if you are in a crimson world, uh, you may want to get something ichor based, like a flask of ichor that'll uh, affect your melee weapons, or a golden shower, which is a magic weapon. Um, particularly for taking on bosses and strong enemies, that ichor debuff that you can apply to your enemies uh, will also lower their defense for your minions, and uh, so that's going to be a big boost there. Um, there's no summoner specific thing that's going to do that, but again, as a summoner, you're you're going to still have you know a couple other weapons anyway. So throw in something with Icar if you're in a Crimson World, that'll help you out. Now, um, let's get on to the other summoner stuff. So I've uh, put this in my hard mode chest here. You can see there's a lot more stuff in hard mode. And uh, first one I'm going to talk about is the Spider Staff. So Spider Staff again does not exist on 3DS, unfortunately. Um, there's a few things here that I'm going to talk about that do not exist on 3DS. You're basically going to need to defeat Plantera if you're on 3DS to really become a summoner. Um, Spider Staff, though, on other platforms, uh, as long as you have uh, the most recent version for other platforms, you can get this uh, right basically from the beginning of hard mode. And basically it summons little tiny little spiders like that. Um, and these guys can actually climb these walls. Uh, there's, you know, I happen to have a tiny little background wall. They can climb background walls. Um, and another interesting thing about them is that they only actually, well, since the update, they only take out, take up three quarters of a minion slot. So uh, if you're on one of the updated platforms, um, you can actually summon extra of these guys, and that's unique to the, to them. You can actually get. Uh, four from three minion slots unless you only have three minion slots in which case for some reason you can't get four but if you have more than uh, three slots um, you can get four of these guys into three slots so uh, yeah um, anyway you can get these guys by um, going to a spider nest underground and killing some black recluses uh, that will get you spider fangs and when you have 16 spider fangs you can go to your uh, anvil uh, I think this will work at a regular anvil as well not necessarily a, a hard mode mithril or, or a calicum anvil um, and you can craft uh, your spider staff and have these guys. Uh, the stats are slightly different pre and post update. It's 25 or 26 uh, base damage for these guys. They're, they're pretty powerful as I say. Um, obviously they run around, they jump pretty high, they can climb background walls and what they actually do is latch onto your enemies and uh, inflict continual damage which is kind of cool and also they can inflict the venom debuff which is like a more powerful version of that poison debuff. So these guys should pretty well, yeah, they'll one-shot those guys just about most of the time. <laughs> um, but to show you the uh, the better effect here, let's spawn a minion. Or, yeah, mimic. My minion will fight the mimic. And you can see he latches on and he does that continual damage, which is what makes um, these guys obviously a very big upgrade, both in damage and in, in their attack style as well. Um, 
they are a little limited because they are ground based, but uh, if you've at least got background walls, you're pretty good. So there's that. Uh, another thing that you can do is uh, from the same source, actually, you can craft a queen spider staff. Likewise, not available on 3DS, sorry guys. Uh, this is actually a sentry thing. Um, and I'm going to talk about sentries. Uh, so you're, as a summoner, you're going to default have at least one sentry that you can deploy. And a sentry um, stays in place, basically. They're a, you, know, you, you just cast them. And generally, you can actually cast these guys like anywhere on the screen, uh, which is interesting too. Um, or at least some of them uh, you can. And they'll just stay there, um, and this one will last two minutes, and it's going to fire eggs, actually, <laughs> at uh, enemies. So, yeah, why don't I put them over here, or her, and I'll get rid of my little baby spider and just show you what it does. Literally fires eggs. And those eggs, as you can see, will sometimes hatch. Uh, baby spiders on impact and those little spiders will sort of suicide attack your enemies as well um, So that's different than your Baby spiders from your regular spider staff <laughs> just to clarify there um, but yeah, that that's actually a uh, Sentry so it does not count towards your minion cap um, It's counted separately and it, Again last two minutes uh, and to craft that you will need to get 24 spider fangs and craft that at your anvil. So you're going to want a lot of spider fangs early in uh, hard mode because the other thing that you can craft from spider fangs, again, also not on 3DS, is your spider armor. So I've uh, hidden away 36 spider fangs just so that I can craft this. And uh, that's your spider mask, your spider breastplate, your spider greaves, that's your full set. And uh, this is your first real hard mode uh, summoning set. So this is your upgrade from your B armor. Uh, unless you're, well, if you're on 3DS, you got nothing. So um, it gives you a bonus three minions. So that's one extra over the B armor. And it uh, boosts your summon damage uh, by 30%. And also has uh, more defense. Um, I didn't really record the defense stats on these. As a summoner, your defense is pretty low in general. Um, so that's like 20, it looks like there. Uh, your B armor is, you know, obviously lower. It's only 13. So you're, you're upgraded to uh, 20 defense at this point. Not a lot still. <laughs> um, and as a summoner, you're not really going to get a lot of defense, sorry. But uh, that's kind of not your role. You're going to summon all your guys, and you're going to try to not to get hit, and you're going to have a couple other rep weapons if you really, really have to fight. That's kind of, <laughs> kind of what you do as a summoner. Um, so there you go. That's your, your first real hard mode uh, summoning armor. Now, if you are on PC, uh, because currently this only exists on PC, uh, one of the updates, and I believe it was the update before the Old Ones Army, uh, this may be coming to other platforms later, but for now it's PC only. You can actually craft Forbidden Armor uh, from the beginning of hard mode as well. Uh, you will need to collect a lot of adamantite or titanium. It's three Forbidden Fragments and 46 adamantite or titanium bars to craft this whole set of Forbidden Armor. Um, it's an interesting one, I, again, for now on PC only at least. Uh, but it's sort of the counterpart to the Frost Armor. The Frost Armor is a combined melee and ranged set. The Forbidden Armor is a combined summoning and magic set, uh, which is kind of interesting. So uh, just to do this and demonstrate, there we go. Uh, we'll swap that in. And so this actually boosts, you can see I got more mana as soon as I put that on because it combines both magic and summoning. Um, it gives you only two extra minions, so uh, that's one less than the spider armor. Uh, and it only boosts your damage by 15%, but it boosts both magic and minion, whereas uh, spider armor only boosts your uh, summoning minion damage, uh, does that by 30%. This boosts both magic and minion, so it's kind of a combined set, both uh, mage and minion. Boosts them both by 15%, gives you an extra 80 mana and two minion slots instead of three of the spider armor. So it's less specialized, but it gives you some flexibility. It also has this cool uh, ancient storm ability. So basically, uh, it will cast that at your cursor location um, by doing your uh, set bonus activate thing, which by default is double tap down. 
and it's cool stuff. <laughs> um, and this gives you some more flexibility, so it's an option. Um, so let's go ahead and just demonstrate that. Obviously, that can take those guys out really easily. And of course, also, I can have um, at this point up to, well, these are these guys are spiders, but so there you go, a uh, total of three. Again, because technically I have four slots, right? No, I have three slots, so no, it's, it's only going to be three anyway. But um, yeah, anyway, that's your forbidden armor, so that's another option if you do have that update uh, currently PC only. But let's move along. So um, the next thing you're likely to be able to get is the pirate staff, uh, which is fun. Definitely fun. Uh, these guys are a little bit limited, but they're but they're very powerful. They're ground based, and they are literally just little pirates. Um, and they run around and they fight for you, of course, as minions do. Uh, minions, by the way, are invincible; they can't be killed. Um, so these guys, before the update, have 32 base damage. Since the update, they have 40 base damage. Again, these guys also are not on 3DS, unfortunately. But they, uh, the pirate staff is dropped by pirates and the Flying Dutchman sort of minibus uh, giant ship thing during pirate invasions. It's pretty rare that you'll actually get this. Uh, but if you do, you're probably going to want to use it because they are obviously very powerful. They're putting up some very nice... Um, damage against those fish. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, Pirate Staff is a good one. If you get it, Pirate Invasions is how you get it. And again, another thing um, that only if you're on PC, uh, this is part of the Old Ones Army update. Uh, after defeating any of the mechanical bosses, you can then fight Tier 2 of the Old Ones Army event which again, currently PC only, may be coming elsewhere later. Uh, and the sort of boss or mini boss of the tier 2 version of that event is the ogre. The ogre can drop any of four different accessories which each give plus one sentry rather than minion and uh, plus 10 summon damage. So summon damage applies both to sentries and to minions. Um, so I've just chosen one of these as you can see it allows me to cast an extra sentry and increases uh, minion. It actually says minion but it's minion and summon like minion and sentry. Um, so that allows me actually to cast two Queen Spiders, um, which is, you know, the only sentry I've got at this point. You do get sentries as part of the Old Ones Army event. I'm not going to talk about the Old Ones Army sentries in this video. I'm going to do a sentry-focused video later probably, uh, probably a while later. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. So this is a damage-boosting accessory as well, and it stacks with these. You can stack these all up. Um, and all that damage boost is going to apply to both your minions and your sentries. Um, so it's very useful if you happen to be, if you happen to have that available. Uh, the thing about the Old Ones Army update is that it also changed the way sentries work. So I'm, I guess I'll talk about this now. So as you can see, I now have two Queen Spiders. You can't do that before the Old Ones Army event, but um, before that event, you did not have a cap on your total number of sentries. So there are several uh, sentry spawning items. There's the Queen Spider Staff, and I'm going to talk about some others later. Before the Old Ones Army update on PC, and on so therefore currently on all other platforms other than PC, for each sentry staff, you can cast one of that sentry, which means for each staff you have, you can cast one sentry and you can cast as many as you have sentry staffs. Since the Old Ones Army update, um, you actually have a, a sentry cap as you have a minion cap. So having this set gives me a total of uh, um, three, so far by default, uh, minions with this particular set. You start with one and then you know there are things that boost the number of minions you can have. And since the Old Ones Army update on PC, that's the same for sentries now as well. Um, so this item is what allows me to now have two. But if I have multiple sentry staffs, I can still only cast the number of sentry slots that I have. So um, next one I'm going to talk about a little bit later is the Staff of the Frost Hydra. So just for an example, um, on other platforms, all the other platforms other than PC for now at least, you can cast a Queen Spider. And when you get the, the Staff of the Frost Hydra, you can cast a Frost Hydra as well. You can 
cast both of those because you have both of the staffs. On PC, you have a, a cap now. So uh, if you have both of those staffs, if you don't have an item like this that boosts your number of sentries, you can still only cast one. So you can cast the Queen Spider or the Frost Hydra. So just so you understand how that works. Um, and yeah, let's, let's just keep moving <laughs> at that point. Um, so um, on all platforms except for 3DS, as long as you have the current version, <laughs> you will also be able to craft the Optic Staff once you have defeated the Twins. It summons a miniature version of the Twins. So let's do that. And it's literally, it's a pair for each minion slot. So just so you understand that. Um, what They fly around, obviously. One attacks by melee, the other attacks with a laser. They have 30 base damage, uh, but you must defeat the twins to craft these because you need the uh, Souls of Sight to do that. Again, I'm not going to get into the recipe. Uh, it's somewhat, it's not very complex, but it's somewhat complex. I have a guide on all of the summoning staffs. Uh, go look at that or go look at the wiki if you want the recipe. Um, but it is kind of a two for one. So therefore, you know, uh, yeah, let me see here. Oh yeah, I've still got my pirates active, that's why. So I have three slots, so I get six of these guys if I cast as many as I can um, and don't have any others cast. You can, of course, mix and match your um, minions, and there are lots of scenarios where you're going to want to mix and match. Obviously, airborne flying ones are going to be better at attacking airborne flying enemies. Uh, some of them can go through walls, some cannot. Um, if you're doing an invasion, a lot of enemies are going to come on the ground, so the pirates might be more useful against the ground-based ones. These guys will be more useful against the air-based enemies. So uh, generally, bosses, you're more likely to want the airborne ones because a lot of the bosses themselves fly or you're running around. And Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so you can actually uh, cast quite a swarm of these guys, but there is a practical limit because these guys have a piercing attack. I, I believe both their piercing, both of their attacks, the different ones, are piercing, if I recall correctly. Um, and because of the way that piercing works, these guys can only hit an enemy six times per second, no matter how many you have. So you can boost your minion cap to a huge number and have a giant swarm of these guys, but all of them in total can still only hit your enemy six times a second. So keep that in mind. Um, but they are very useful because they're airborne. They can, they can attack flying enemies. They're the first airborne minion you're going to get in hard mode, and that in itself uh, makes them very useful. They can be quite effective. But uh, here's where things get interesting, because finally the 3DS people can be in the game too. Uh, the Pygmy Staff is the next one uh, that you're liable to get. When you defeat Plantera, you have a chance of getting this. I, I, if I recall, it's a 1 in 4. I didn't make a note of that. Um, Oh, actually, I did make a note of that. It is a 1 in 4 chance to drop from Plantera. Or if you're in expert mode, it's a 1 in 2. Um, Pygmy Staff has a base of 32 damage. Uh, obviously, I am wearing summoning armor, so mine's way higher, and also because it's got a damage boost. But it is 34 base damage on all platforms. Summons a Pygmy Minion for each cast. That's these little guys. They are ground-based, but they do jump high, and they throw spears. So unlike uh, the other ground-based minions so far, uh, they are effective somewhat, at least against air-based enemies, uh, because they toss their little spears at them. And this staff is actually very important. Besides being useful in and of itself, as a summoner, you will want to farm Plantera and get this pygmy staff, because it's necessary to get several other... Um, items. And yes, you can get this on 3DS. You're in the game, boys. You're in the game. So uh, even, even on older versions of the game, if you're not up to date on whatever platform you're on, um, this is basically one of the first ones that was added. So once you have the Pygmy staff, you can then go to the Witch Doctor. At night, you can buy the Pygmy necklace. And that's another nice accessory to have. Gives you plus one minion. Um, so now I have my base one, my two from this set, and that gives me another one. So now we're up to four again, <laughs> or I can just swap in my spider and I can be up to five with my spider um, armor set. Just a thought. Um, so yeah, he will, uh, he will only sell you the pygmy necklace at night, the witch doctor. 
and you have to defeat Plantera, and you have to have the Pygmy Staff for him to sell you that. Another thing that he will sell you, another accessory, a Hercules Beetle, and this is very important for summoners. Uh, you can see here, increases the damage of your minions by 15%, so basically that's a match for the summoner emblem. It does essentially the same thing. Also increases your knockback uh, of your minions as well, though, so it's a little bit better than the summoner um, emblem. So I will swap that out uh, in place of the sentry thing now. And yeah, that's it's important for other ways, which we'll get to in just a second. But he will sell you, uh, the Witch Doctor also sells you the Hercules Beetle. In this case, he has to be in the jungle. So there are other reasons to have a house for him in the jungle. So my Witch Doctor does indeed live in the jungle in his own little house that's way far away from everybody else. Just because there's some things that you can only get from him if he's in the jungle. So you need to have defeated Plantera. Again, you need to have this staff and... Um, then he will sell you the Hercules Beetle as well. Uh, and if you go at night, you can also get <laughs> the Pygmy Necklace or, you know, get them separately, whatever. But they're both very useful, both very important. The other thing that you can get from him at that point, once you have the Pygmy Staff, once you've defeated Plantera, um, and it doesn't matter where he is or what time it is, for this one is your Tiki Armor. And this is uh, your, your major uh, armor upgrade at this point. It is definitely an upgrade over both of those other sets, although it doesn't have the, the sort of combo thing that the Forbidden set does have. But uh, Tiki Armor gives you four extra minions on top of your base of one. So with just the Tiki Armor and your, your basic stat, you can have five. And of course, then we've added a sixth with the Piggy, Pygmy Necklace there as well. Uh, we can also use the Bewitching Table and the Summoning Potion to add two more. So you get the idea. You can start getting quite a swarm of minions at this point. Uh, the Tiki Armor also gives you 30% boosted minion damage itself. Um, and yeah, you're, you're definitely going to want that. And again, these are available on all platforms. So, so we're in the game. Everybody's in the game now. And uh, another thing, um, I did swap out my sentry thing, but uh, this is the point where I'm going to talk about my next sentry, the Staff of the Frost Hydra, because you need to defeat uh, Plantera to be able to get the Staff of the Frost Hydra. This is a very powerful sentry uh, minion. Um, sentry summon, let's say, because yeah, minions, sentries, separate things, keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, Staff of the Frost Hydra, you're definitely going to want this as a summoner. Uh, it does not account on your minion cap. Uh, again, pre Old One's Army, uh, you can cast one of these regardless. Uh, since the Old One's Army, it's going to depend on your sentry cap. You will have at least one sentry. Uh, that you can cast, and you're definitely going to want this one rather than the Queen Spider because it does, uh, let's see here, where'd my note go? 100 base damage, <laughs> and uh, it is still summon or minion damage type, so all those boosts will apply to that as well, which is why uh, it's a base of 100, but mine's doing 175 with all these accessories and armor. <laughs> So very, very powerful. Uh, again, like the Queen Spider, it remains in place for two minutes or until recast. And again, I can kind of put it anywhere on the screen. You can actually use this for exploring because it emits a little bit of light. Uh, this is obtained from the frozen chest in the dungeon after defeating the Plantera. After defeating Plantera requires the frozen key. Uh, so if you're lucky, you might have a frozen key already by then or you can farm for one. Uh, go find the frozen chest and get your your, your staff, the Frost Hydra. It's, it's very, very useful. And you can combine that with uh, your minions as well, have a nice swarm of them, and you're doing some serious output, uh, damage output at that point. Now, uh, one thing that is back to being on the updated platforms only, the Deadly Sphere staff is your sort of next available minion at this point. Because once uh, you've defeated Plantera, Deadly Sphere enemies will start showing up during solar eclipses on the updated platforms only. Um, and you have a chance of getting the Deadly Sphere staff when you defeat them. If you do get it, you can cast Deadly Sphere minions. And, uh, well, they fly around and they charge at your enemies and do damage. It's 50 base damage, so it's, it's pretty powerful. Uh, they do have a little bit of a tendency to get stuck. Um, they're not the only ones, actually. The, the Optic Staff, the Twins, do that a bit as well. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're quite powerful, so you're probably going to want them. Very useful. Um, 
but available on the updated platforms only again for now, PC, PS4, uh, Xbox One, coming to mobile, <laughs> and uh, will be on Switch. But other stuff that is available, um, until I say otherwise, the rest of it is available a, uh, on all platforms, mostly uh, 3DS, there's a couple exceptions still. So uh, you can get the Raven Staff at this point uh, if you can fight through the Pumpkin Moon. Uh, you may want to wait until after you defeated the Golem, or you may want to try it. Uh, you're not really going to get more powerful by defeating Golem as a summoner, not, not really. <laughs> so uh, you may want to fight through the Pumpkin Moon as soon as you can. Uh, get the Raven Staff, summons a Raven, to fight for you. <laughs> and uh, the Raven, likewise, uh, flies around, charges at enemies, attacks them, does 37 base damage, uh, is dropped. The Raven Staff is dropped by the Pump King during the Pumpkin Moon event. Let's just go, go quickly uh, show you what these guys do. There's my Pygmy firing spears. Deadly Sphere and the Raven all flying around. They're all doing their thing. They're all pretty effective, actually. Um... <laughs> And again, you may want to mix and match depending on the circumstances, which is why I'm not saying you must use this particular uh, summon. Um, you know, think about the stats, think about what they do and what circumstances they work best in. Mix and match, experiment a little. Um, but yeah, another thing that you will get from the Pumpkin Moon and why it's important to uh, do the Pumpkin Moon is the Necromantic Scroll. This is another one that then uh, increases your minion capacity by one, also increases your minion damage by 10%. Um, drop by Morning Wood during the Pumpkin Moon. Uh, not only is this a great accessory on its own, and I would probably at this point swap out the Avenger emblem personally and put that in its place. Uh, Necromantic Scroll, because I get a damage boost and I get an extra minion. Very, very useful. Um, but besides that, there's a reason I have a second Necromantic Scroll and Hercules Beetle. Um, on all platforms except, sorry, 3DS. It's not on 3DS that you can do this. But uh, the rest of the platforms, if you have the current version, you can combine a Hercules Beetle and a Necromantic Scroll into a Papyrus Scarab, and you'll do that at your Tinkerer's Workshop, as you usually do when you're combining things. So I'll go over here, and here we go. Papyrus Scarab combines the uh, extra minion and extra damage of the Necromantic Scroll with uh, the, the extra knockback boost and even higher damage of the Hercules Beetle. So uh, at that point, uh, I might want to swap that one out. Um, because it does plus one minion capacity and 15%, like the Hercules Beetle, minion damage. Uh, and again, also um, increases the minion knockback. So it is, it is in every way superior to your summoner emblem at that point, if you can get it. So we'll get that out of there. Uh, and this is kind of probably your number one accessory at this point, uh, because it does do a huge damage boost for your minions and your sentries. Uh, gives you that extra minion as well, increases the minion knockback. Uh, and you can actually stack this with these as well. So uh, having all of those together, obviously very, very powerful. Your extra uh, minion from your Pygmy necklace is also very useful. Um, if you're playing expert, you could keep one of these as well. Probably your summoner emblem, I might say. You can keep one of those as well because you'll have an extra slot. Um, so there you go. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be basically your, your post Plantera, post Pumpkin Moon <laughs> setup. Um, and the other thing, actually, that's not your entire uh, post Pumpkin Moon setup because the other thing, very important, is Spooky Wood. Uh, you can craft the Spooky Armor. So this is, it's a debate. There is a debate whether you want um, the Tiki Armor or the Spooky Armor. I would probably go with the Spooky Armor personally. Um, difference being that the Pygmy Armor has one extra minion slot, but the Spooky Armor increases your damage by a larger amount. So uh, Tiki Armor, you're gonna get four extra minions and the 30% minion damage boost. Uh, spooky Armor, you're gonna get only three extra minions, so it's one less minion that you get, 
but your damage is boosted by 58%, which is huge. And as you kind of maybe notice there, it requires a total of 750 spooky wood from the pumpkin moon, and you actually craft that at your workbench. And I would use that because, yes, you have one less minion, but if you're using all these accessories and maybe your bewitching table and your summoning potion, one minion is not going to be missed all that much, and you're going to have so many doing that huge extra boosted damage that I personally would definitely um, go with the spooky armor personally. But that's a matter of preference and taste. If you want the extra minion, you can do that. Uh, or if maybe you don't have as many accessories, um, then there's there might be more of a case to be made for that as well. So there you go. Um, definitely do the Pumpkin Moon. You're going to want your Raven Staff, your Necromantic Scroll, your Papyrus Scarab, and your Spooky Armor, all from the Pumpkin Moon. Very important event for summoners. Uh, now, less important, actually, interestingly enough, uh, for a lot of classes, it's important to defeat the Golem and to get the things you can get by defeating the Golem. It's actually much less so <laughs> as a summoner. Yes, you can get a Destroyer Emblem after defeating the Golem, um, but notice... Okay, Destroyer Emblem increases your damage 10%. Well, I've already got things that increase the damage more, more than that. Oh, but Destroyer Emblem, that's great. It increases your critical strike chance by 8%. Problem is um, that minions actually cannot do critical hits, and so um, there's no point having that critical strike boost. It's not going to help you any. So... Um, you can, and you need a, an Avenger Emblem to craft a Destroyer Emblem, uh, you can do that, uh, but you're actually getting, notice the Avenger Emblem is plus 12% damage, the Destroyer Emblem is only 10% extra damage, so you're actually losing by, by, by crafting the Destroyer Emblem. So unless you have an extra um, Avenger Emblem kicking around and an extra slot as well, you're probably not going to want to do um, the Destroyer Emblem. Uh, so one sec, I will be right back to finish this up. So indeed, the Destroyer Emblem is not super useful unless you have those extra slots, but something that is useful after you've defeated Golem that you can craft at that point is a Celestial Stone or a Celestial Shell. Now it depends uh, if you are on the, one of the updated platforms or on one of the pre-update platforms, uh, whether you can, before the update, you can only craft up to the Celestial Stone, which is uh, by combining the Sunstone and the Moonstone. Uh, if you are on one of the updated platforms, you can then combine that Celestial Stone with a Moon Shell to get the Celestial Shell. But either way, um, some of the basic effects are the same, and that is uh, an extra 10% damage, uh, plus 4 defense, some health point regeneration, and a 50% minion knockback boost, uh, along with some other boosts. So it is um, definitely certainly more useful than... Uh, the Destroyer Emblem, it helps with your defense a bit as well. Uh, so it's a good question where you're going to want to slot that in. It is only a 10% boost. Um, and it does not boost the number of minions that you can uh, use at that point. So it's going to be a little bit of a trade-off uh, where you're going to want to slot that in as far as your accessories. Um, but Celestial Stone is definitely a useful one, and, and I might even be tempted to put that in place of the Hercules Beetle because that um, does not give you any extra minions either. Um, it is less of a damage boost in total, uh, but with those other boosts, um, overall it might be a little more useful. Uh, so that's a matter of matter of opinion, matter of uh, your, your own decision and how many slots you have free and so on. Um, one more thing that you can get on all platforms actually is the uh, Tempest Staff. And so this summons a Sharknado, a tornado that fires sharks, uh, follows the player around. Um, this little, and the, the tornado itself will do damage as well as the actual sharks. Um, this is a drop from Duke Fishron. It's a one in five chance. So, you know, obviously very tough boss to defeat. But if you do, you get this. And uh, it's a 50 base damage. It's, again, very powerful, but not very accurate. So uh, you can see, as I said, the tornado itself does damage there. Um, and yeah, it, it literally fires sharks. So uh, depending how fast your enemies are moving, you can see it does miss sometimes even on these guys, and they're just like bouncing there in place. So um, yeah, it, it can be very good. It can be uh, you know not that great, but uh, but it is one of the more powerful ones that's available on all platforms. Now, um, after you defeat a golem, if you're on one of the updated platforms, there are a whole bunch of additional things on the updated platforms for the late game. Uh, post-golem 
uh, updated stuff. So uh, first of all, if you're an expert, um, you might want to get the shrimpy truffle. Uh, you might want to use the shrimpy truffle that you get from Duke Fishron. If you're in expert mode, that will always be in the Duke Fishron treasure bag. Um, so that the shrimpy truffle will allow you to fly and you put it in your mount slot, which means you can then uh, free up that wing slot and that way you can actually use all of those. Um, and of course in expert you can also have one more, um, which can be one of those other ones that I showed you before, such as your, your summoner uh, emblem would probably be the go-to there, but it's, it's your choice. Um, so you can actually stack up all of these and um, they will all you know stack uh, the damage boosts on each other. So if we look at this, this is supposed to be um, a base of 50, <laughs> and you can see it's 123 there. Of course, it does have a damage boost on itself, and there's modifiers on some of these. But you get the idea with uh, you know the armor boosts and all of those. You you can get truly truly massive uh, damage increases. Uh, now, if you're not in expert mode, an alternative to that uh, shrimpy truffle is the cosmic car key, which I have equipped here. Uh, so again, by having a mount that allows you to fly, you don't need your wings anymore, and you free up that spot for an extra accessory, which can be very, very useful. Um, and also if you're on PC uh, specifically, because this is one of those things with the old ones army update, you may want to consider the Betsy's Wrath uh, to augment, you know, I mentioned the Icker uh, based weapons and the Icker debuff that you can use uh, earlier in the game. Betsy's Wrath is a separate debuff that's twice as powerful as Icker. So if you're on PC uh, or if the old ones army comes to whatever you're playing on uh, later on, um, that is is incredibly powerful, going to be very, very useful against late game bosses to lower their defense by 40 actually. Uh, so it's not a summoner specific weapon, but it's going to be very useful anyway. But getting back to summoner, summoner specific stuff, um, on the updated platforms only, you can get the Xeno Staff. This is from the Martian Madness event, uh, and it is you know your next minion essentially. <sighs> cute little UFO flies around zapping your enemies. It chases after enemies. It also teleports to get to your enemies, zaps them with lasers. Um, it's a relatively lower 36 base damage, but because it fires and teleports rapidly, it never misses. It is actually highly, highly effective. Um, and it's dropped by the Martian Saucer during the Martian Madness event. It's a chance, of course, so you'll have to farm those saucers a bit. Uh, and that Martian Madness event is available only on the updated platforms after defeating Golem. Now, um, a little bit further along, after you defeat a Golem, maybe you've done that event, maybe you haven't, uh, you defeat the Lunatic Cultist, and then you get into the uh, Lunar events, the Celestial events with the Celestial Pillars, You'll want to, as a summoner, probably defeat the Stardust Pillar first uh, because that is going to give you access to two more very, very powerful staffs. Basically, the, the last uh, minion summoning staffs that you can get in the game, the Stardust Cell Staff and the Stardust Dragon Staff. So each of these is actually crafted um, from 18 Stardust Fragments at the Ancient Manipulator. So you get the Stardust Fragments by defeating the Stardust Pillar. You get your Ancient Manipulator by defeating the Lunatic Cultist before that. Uh, Stardust Cell Staff summons these little Stardust Cells. Uh, they likewise uh, similarly chase your enemies around. Um, they fire at a bit of a range. Uh, they can also teleport, but they don't teleport as quickly as the UFOs. On the other hand, um, they fire an unavoidable mini cell which latches onto uh, the target enemy and deals continual damage uh, for 30 ticks. Uh, the listed base damage is 60, but you can stack, they can stack a bunch of those mini cells on an enemy for up to 100 damage per tick. Uh, so that makes them pretty powerful. Those do not uh, do damage on contact, as you can see there. You can see between these two minions, um, they're going to take out something simple like a Mimic pretty quickly. So let's do one at a time uh, just to kind of show you here. So if we have just one UFO, he's going to do these, the little zap thing. Whereas if we have just one Stardust, see he attaches... Uh, well, he is a little... 
200, it attaches uh, those little mini cells to the enemy and those continue to do damage over time. So against probably a larger enemy, I, I would be more inclined to go with this because they're gonna attach a whole bunch of those guys. Uh, but you may even want a, a mix because uh, I think there is a limit to how many mini cells you can actually attach. Um, to one enemy, so against a large boss, you, you may hit a limit there eventually uh, where you, you'll want a mix of minions. Um, now, speaking of the Stardust Dragon, um, in fact, you may not want to mix minions with this one, other minions, because how this Stardust Dragon works, and of course this is a very well-known one, it summons a Stardust Dragon, and you can see a little little Stardust Dragon, and he's going he's gonna to do all right, um, and he does do contact damage. And you can see just the little one does enough damage to take out a uh, mimic very, very quickly. Uh, but with each additional summon, the Stardust Dragon gets longer. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, you want to use your bewitching table and your summoning potions and, and everything that you can get. But uh, this will get more and more powerful the longer it is with each additional sort of segment added to it. Uh, likewise, sort of flies around chasing and attacking enemies, obviously, sort of wanders. Uh, listed base damage is 40, but in reality, it's going to do far, far more damage than that. Um, it, it is possible, depending on the circumstances, to do damage in the thousands or even tens of thousands of damage per second, uh, depending on the situation, depending on the enemy, and so on. Again, like the, the Stardust Cell Staff, the Stardust Dragon Staff is crafted from uh, 18 Stardust Fragments at the Ancient Manipulator, which is why you're going to want to take out that Stardust Pillar first when you hit the Celestial Events. Now, uh, the rest of what I'm going to talk about is actually after you defeat Moon Lord. So, uh, last major, well, the last set of armor as a summoner is the Stardust Armor, and you are going to need Luminite from defeating the Moon Lord along with uh, a whole bunch of Stardust Fragments. So you're probably going to have to go through um, the Celestial Events and defeating Moon Lord possibly a few times. You're going to need 36 Luminite Bars and 45 Stardust Fragments at your Ancient Manipulator. Um, and this is undisputedly the best um, minion set because it gives you an extra five minions along with whatever other boosts and bonuses. You have your base one, you have those five, and whatever other ones you have from your accessories. Uh, so obviously you can get quite a few minions if you use this set. And um, so I should actually be able to get two more compared to uh, the spooky set specifically. And it boosts the damage by 66%. So spooky uh, set does 58%. This does just a little more. Um, and it also does one more minion than the Tiki armor, so you know you can't really argue there. It does two more minions than the Spooky armor. It does one more than the Tiki armor. It does uh, a bit more damage uh, boosting than the Spooky armor, a lot more than the Tiki armor. So uh, the trade-offs are gone at this point, and uh, the Stardust armor is definitely the best. The other thing is that it also has this Stardust Guardian, um, ability that comes with it that does not count as a minion. It's a, a bonus to the armor um, and it's activated again with the, the set bonus um, double tapping down. You basically point your cursor where you want him to guard and by default it's double tap down to activate and he just kind of guards that little area. Uh, he's sort of like a sentry. He'll chase enemies a uh, short distance and he creates little explosions that uh, will damage the enemies. So let's see who kills the Mimic first here. Clearly the Stardust Dragon. Stardust Guardian is not like super, super powerful. Um, and in fact, you have to activate that ability. He will not do anything until you activate him. So as you can see, he's not super, super powerful. But the thing is that uh, you'll notice the Mimic is trying to attack him rather than me, which makes him a little more useful. He will actually draw enemies away from you. And of course, he's invincible. So um, that in itself is useful. He's not super powerful as with his attacks. But the fact that he draws enemies away from you as a summon it's very, very important. Um, so yeah, as you can see, he kind of chases people around just that little area. Anyway, um, moving along, that's actually all your armor and weapons, uh, well, your summon minion weapons anyway. Uh, but what you can get is a couple more sentries. Um, and again, as a summoner, you, you still at least have uh, by default one, and you can get more. Um, 
sentry slots and actually on the um, non-PC, the ones that don't have the uh, newer updates, um, you can actually cast one of each of these. Uh, you can see that I cannot. I can cast one or the other because I have that uh, PC uh, update now with the Old Ones Army that limits the number of sentry slots by default and I don't have any boost to my sentry slot number. But uh, on other platforms that do not have that Old Ones Army update, you can actually cast one of each of these. So it's the Lunar Portal um, staff, which is this one, and this fires like a constant beam. So I'll just go ahead and... Uh, I think if I, can I cancel that? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I, I forget how to cancel that. Actually, no, I do know how to cancel that. It's here. There we go. So he'll, he'll just follow me around when he's not set, right? He's supposed to. There's a way to cancel that, and I forget right now. But um, yeah, Lunar Portal. Let's just set our Guardian way over there so he's out of the way. We'll fire this continuous beam. As you can see, uh, does quite a bit of damage. And um, yeah, it's kind of like the Moon Lord's attack. It's a sweeping beam uh, that lasts for like, I think it's five seconds or something. And then it just fires another one. That's clearly not five seconds. But anyway, it's a couple seconds. Uh, the portal itself will last for two minutes. It's 50 base damage. Um, and the Lunar Portal staff has a one in nine chance to drop from the Moon Lord. Likewise, you have a one in nine chance of getting the Rainbow Crystal staff. Now, this is a little different. Uh, deals high damage, but um, it's a delayed effect. So you see these, these little rainbow things. You notice it's not actually hitting the Mimic because it is a fast-moving enemy. Um, a lot of those did not actually hit because what happens, it fires these little beams and then there's a delayed explosion at the end of those beams, essentially. And it's the explosions that actually do the damage. So um, this can be very useful against groups of enemies or slow-moving enemies. It's not so good against fast-moving enemies because of that delay. Uh, but likewise, it lasts two minutes. It has 150 base damage, so it is very, very powerful. Um, and it's only limited by that the delay and the explosion. So if you can you can wall in your enemies, constrict their movement somehow, then that also makes this more useful. Um, but it's not the beams, it's the delay explosion that actually do the damage. So um, that's basically that. And uh, I think I already sort of explained the difference uh, with sentries um, before and after the Old Ones Army update. So currently, anything other than PC um, is before that. Um, you can cast one of each type of sentry. So, you know, you can have your Queen Spider, your um, Staff of the Frost Hydra, the, the Frost Hydra itself. Uh, you can have your Queen Spider, your Frost Hydra, your Lunar Portal, and your Rainbow Crystal. You can just cast one of each of those before the Old Ones Army update. Everybody but PC currently. Um, on PC, you can only cast one at a time. Um, but there's a whole other thing around uh, essentially you can you can have a whole other type of summoner uh, who is focused on um, sentries more so than minions or you can do some sort of balance in between um, but I'm going to cover that in a separate video because it's basically PC only for the moment and there's no point uh, trying to expand on this very long video already. Uh, you do get additional sentries with the Old Ones Army update as well. Uh, so I'll do a separate video on that later on. But for now, let's go demonstrate uh, some of what we can do here. So I'm going to get my Bewitching Table buff. Um, I guess I'll just go ahead and do all my buffs. So that should include somewhere in here. Yeah, summoning, extra minion there as well. Um, and I am going to go take on, actually, ironically, the Stardust Pillar. So let's just demonstrate what these different minions can do against this event here. So that's Deadly Spheres. But Deadly Spheres aren't super powerful, so let's try some Ravens. So they do all right, um, but let's do some Sharknadoes. <laughs> yeah, in large enough numbers, these are uh, reasonably effective. Um, now this is the issue for a summoner. You need to avoid damage as much as possible. Oh, look at the swarm of those guys. <laughs> but uh, you can see the inaccuracy 
of the Sharknadoes, the actual sharks they fire. Let me get out of here just for a second. Sit by my fire and uh, recoup a bit. Must still be close enough there. <laughs> Swarms of sharks. Yeah, the uh, the accuracy is definitely an issue. But it's funny. I mean, seriously, how funny is that? Yeah, and these guys, the problem with these guys is they multiply. But this is why we fly, you know? So, you know what? This is a good time to get my UFOs in here. Oh, never mind. I'll be right back. All right, here we go. Time to charge back into battle with something a little better. This is why people love the UFOs. Let me show you why people love the UFOs. <laughs> Do I even see my enemies? <laughs> they just annihilate them. UFOs against especially scattered enemies actually are very, very powerful. They can be very powerful against bosses as well. Um, because they just teleport. And so anything, anywhere just gets killed very, very quickly. Uh, but let's try the Stardust cells. Only fair against all these other cells. Make sure that I got as many as possible. The only confusion about this is, you know, which ones are my cells which versus which ones are the enemy cells. That's a bit of an issue. Oh, and I think we just took down the barrier. Um, yeah, now these guys are going to be taking him out. But, you know, the UFOs and those are going to be actually less uh, useful against something like that compared to the hero of the day. Yeah, see, Stardust Dragon took that out almost immediately. And against, particularly against large single targets, um, the Stardust Dragon is going to be incredible. But in general, Stardust Dragon is... Uh, well, just very, very powerful. <laughs> so, um, hope that's a sufficient demonstration. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.